Can a public school censor a student newspaper? To find out, you have to read Hazelwood versus Kuhlmeyer, but it's 14 pages. Don't have time for that? I've got you covered. This is TLDR, where I cover New York Court of Appeals cases, and I try to do it in five minutes or less. But this is part of a special series I'm doing on landmark cases. This is the episode on the case of Hazelwood versus Kuhlmeyer, with a citation of 484 U.S. 260, published by the United States Supreme Court on January 13, 1988. The issue in this case is whether a public school can constitutionally censor a student newspaper. To better understand this case, you have to understand a little bit about the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. The First Amendment protects the right to freedom of speech, in essence, preventing government from engaging in censorship. It states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. The 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution requires states to comply with the Bill of Rights, including the First Amendment right to freedom of speech and the press. See, the First Amendment protects our right to speak our minds without the federal government butting in. And the 14th Amendment ensures that state governments cannot do so either. But when it comes to schools, it gets a little tricky. Students don't lose their First Amendment rights at the schoolhouse gate, or so said the Supreme Court in another landmark case, Tinker versus Des Moines. Tinker basically said, schools can't punish students for expressing their opinions unless it's likely to cause a major disruption. Think massive protests or incitement of a riot in the cafeteria, but left unanswered was whether less dangerous censorship would be allowed at the public school level. So what are the facts in this case. In 1983, at the public Hazelwood East High School in Missouri, there was a school newspaper called The Spectrum. The Spectrum published a few editions throughout the year. Toward the end of the school year, The Spectrum was about to publish its final issue of the year. The principal reviewed the articles in advance of publication, as was normal part of the policy, and he was not happy. He saw two articles he deemed inappropriate, one about teen pregnancy and another about divorce. He considered them too sensitive and too controversial for a school paper. So without discussion or debate, the principal decided to pull those two articles and refused to allow the paper to publish them in the spectrum. The students were outraged. They felt like their First Amendment rights had been trampled. So they sued. And thus began the legal battle that went down in history. The case went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the nation's civil rights advocates watched closely. The big question was this, does the Tinker Rule apply to school-sponsored activities like the newspaper? In a 5-3 to three decision, the court sided with the school. The majority held that schools have a special interest in controlling what's taught and expressed within their walls, especially when it comes to school-sponsored activities like a newspaper. The majority agreed with the school principal, finding that the First Amendment was not violated because the school newspaper was not a public forum for public expression. Educators do not violate the First Amendment by exercising editorial control over content so long as they are reasonably related to legitimate teaching concerns. But a strong dissent disagreed. The dissent argued that this decision guts Tinker and leaves student speech vulnerable to censorship. They worried that this would create a chilling effect, discouraging students from speaking their minds freely. The impact of Hazelwood on speech has been mixed. Some schools saw it as a green light to continue to editorially censor student newspapers and other publications. Others tried to uphold student free speech rights while still maintaining appropriate boundaries. But one thing's for sure, Hazelwood changed the game for student journalism. It reinforcing the power of school administrators to play a role in the content and editorial decisions of school publications. Created a gray area. The decision reinforced that while it's important for students to express themselves and explore different viewpoints, schools have an overriding concern that can trump student free. If you like what you just saw and want to see more just like it, please hit like or subscribe to let me know.